Oh, no, me and, um, OG Ohio. One of the second OGS skins in the game. And what in the yeah, heck are my two friends house. doing? How, How am I not supposed to? That's what we're doing. How am I supposed to get in there? What the heck is this? <laughs> Another. Ohio. <laughs> we're doing a oh. role play. Rough. Bruh. We didn't wait. Boy! Yeah. Stop throwing camera! Oh god. Go take that outside! Alright, everyone, we're in. <laughs> Hmm. No, no, man. I'm about to fall out of being a bite. I need a block. What box. in the heck are you doing to Ohio? Bruh. in our little room. Bruh. I hear whining. I feel like a dog's whining. Yes, that's my dog. Oi! <laughs> hello, Oi. hello. <laughs> Oh, hey. <laughs> Someone say you're at Ohio. <laughs> oh, oh, you piece of garbage! Yeah, you I garbage! Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. There. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Piece of garbage. Uh, yeah, about that garbage. <laughs> I thought I actually had a way I can get in. Oh god, no! God dang it! Ow! <laughs> How in the hell am I supposed to get in there now? Well, I can see the audio. There's no way. <laughs> There's the other. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Give me edits. Give me edits on the face. No! In there. No! I'll, no. Throw, I'll throw out another rusty can at a kid in my I don't care if you do. <laughs> no, I don't want to you doing? What in the heck is these? Are these sausages or what? <laughs> what? Sorry. These are freaking giant apples. What the heck are these? These are... These are wieners. <laughs> They're hot dog beans. <laughs> no, they're cups, actually. They're cups. No, well, they're not. If they were cups, they wouldn't be hollow. They ain't actually are cups. Let me check. They are not cups! And they're wiener dogs. They're actually hot dogs. Or we they're hot dogs. That's what they are. Wiener dogs. Will you stop saying wiener dogs like Jesus Christ? Wiener doggos. Wiener doggos. I said wiener doggos. So I said the cow. <laughs> You're in the table now. What the fuck? I hear. Why is there a dog whining? Okay, I'll come back. Wait, the magic carpet's back. What in the earth is this? Okay. Is that top? Mr. Top No. Right before we get started, if you guys are purchasing anything from today's item shop, then be sure you support a creator called Brandon YT, as this helps out support the channel, as I am an epic partner with Fortnite. And as well, make sure you guys go comment down below your epic games username, because I am adding everyone for future gifts. Oh, I can't even get you on it. I cannot get on it, dang it. I know I say this every single video, but seriously, you guys have been showing so much support. If you guys are new to the channel, and... You guys are gonna this. Oh god. Welcome to the kill 
Cow, where we tally up the victims in all our favorite horror movies. Oh, I'm James A. Janice, and today we're looking at It Chapter 2, released in 2019. It Chapter 2 is the sequel to 2017's wildly popular It Chapter 1, which I previously covered in a two-part kill count. I also did a two-part kill count for the 1998 miniseries, but It Chapter 2 will be covered in a single video. YouTube's okay. Don't worry about it. Chapter 2 sees the losers from the first all grown up into a group of remarkably sexy adults. If you've read Stephen King's book or seen the ABC miniseries, you already know what to expect from the second half. Twenty-seven Hello. years after fighting Pennywise, the evil dancing clown, the losers are summoned back to Derry, Maine, to vanquish their old shape-shifting nemesis once and for all. A lot of the crew from the first movie returned for the sequel, and they all worked under the leadership of the siblings Muschietti, Andy Muschietti in the director's chair, and his sister Barbara Muschietti as producer. Andy and Barbara are both lifelong Stephen King fans. Having read his books and well, I need to change my skin. Kids in part one. They're both lovely, passionate people who were happy to spend nearly five years of their lives making these two movies and telling this ambitious story. It Chapter 2 had a tough hill to climb from the start. Living up to the box office smashing first film was always going to be a difficult task, especially when the ensemble cast of kid actors was a big part of what made It so successful. In fact, one of the most common criticisms of the It miniseries was that the second adult-focused half wasn't as strong as the first. I guess John Ritter kissing clowns just couldn't match kids uh, building trash dams or whatever. Would It Chapter 2 face the same kind of negative reaction? Eh, maybe a little bit. It wasn't received as enthusiastically as the first, neither critically nor at the box office, but in my opinion, anyone calling this an awful movie is overstating the case. It's definitely not as strong as the first one for a number of reasons, including pacing, with the movie nearly three hours long, tone with a few too many comedic beeps at inappropriate moments, and oh, scary. The heck? I don't think it's nearly as scary as chapter one. But I'm willing to excuse a lot of that since I was blown away by the movie's epic scale, how hilarious it was when the comedy landed, and oh, no. most of all, oh, no. the cast they got for the adult loser. They took a lot of care to find physically similar actors. A process that began on set during the first film and included input from the kid actors. In the beginning, I was always Bill Hader. I was just like a super fan. Yeah. yeah. In a very unconventional way of hiring someone, saying a 14-year-old told me to hire you. They were obviously very successful at this endeavor. James Ramsone looks exactly like a grown-up version of Jack Dylan Grazer, a similarity that even Ramsone's closest relatives noted right off the bat. Alright, we're doing a role play in here. He saw this in the theater and he was like, my kid looks like Peter. He was weirded out by it. But it's not just the physical. So everyone to your house is. It's also the raw acting talent on display. Everyone is phenomenal, and I'm gonna ride. BRB, get a house and find a house. Okay. It's the cast's heartfelt portrayals that give the film's heavy emotional beats such weight. I cried both times I saw this in theaters, and I love it when a movie makes me cry. Man. A couple of quick notes before we get started. First, I may mention some production info that probably would have been more appropriate in the kill count for the first movie, but back then, I didn't include as much behind the scenes info as I do now. And speaking of the hit chapter one kill count, I actually have some corrections to make regarding it. But I'll explain after we do the numbers for this movie, so stick around for those. All that being said, let's finally get into it. Chapter 2. Oh, my God. The movie begins with young Beverly Marsh floating in a sewer. Damn it, Beb, I told you that deadlights are like the eclipse. You're not supposed to look directly at them. We kind of recap the ending of the first movie, and if you like recaps and flashbacks, well, you're in luck. This film we got a lot of them. It's one of the things that slows down the pace a bit, but at least most of it is new footage filmed specifically for this movie. We're not watching the same exact stuff all over again. 27 years later, boyfriends Don and Adrian are in Enjoying a dairy carnival and all the fun prizes they can win there. I've never been a fan of the beaver, but um, look at this hat. 
Unfortunately, a group of violent and hormonal homophobes see them and follow the couple to a bridge. Heads up, this is a very graphic and uncomfortable scene, so, you know, don't watch if you don't want to. Because these bullies don't just beat these innocent dudes up, they fucking brutalize them, man. And it doesn't help that you've got that little shit laughing the whole time, too. <laughs> Look at the kid to his fucking face! The assailants dump Adrian's body into the river, then run off to get in line for the Tilt-A-Whirl. As Don makes his way down to save his boyfriend, oh, Adrian okay. starts swimming okay. towards the only figure he can see nearby. What is that thing? Oh, just your average run-of-the-mill riverbank clown. Pennywise stares across the river at Don before he grows some fangs and chomps into Adrian's side. Okay, okay, go to your house. Don cries in horror as Nina starts singing about nuclear war or whatever, and Pennywise dis-a-fucking-peers. Our sleepy part-time narrator for the film is Mike Hamlet, who still lives in Derry, and who is you know live here. Gapa, who had his final audition for the role on his wedding day. You got the part and the wife in the same day. Way to go, man. When he's not too busy turning tickets into diamonds, Mike's checking out crime scenes and learning that a reunion party is being planned for all his friends. Because Mike here is the only loser who stayed in Derry, Maine. Let's see where the others wound up. Bill Denbro, played by James the Split McAvoy, is now an author living in California, where his latest book is being turned into a Warner Brothers movie starring his wife Audra, who's played by Jess Weitzler of Teeth. Too bad she and the movie's director, actual filmmaker Peter Bogdanovich, thinks that Bill is bad at writing endings. You said you liked the ending. That was a lie. It's a running joke throughout the movie that evokes the most common criticism of Stephen King's stories. Since Bill is, after all, a Stephen King... Now, maybe something evil is going on here. They beat the shit out of the table, then try to leave, and they should be alright as long as Richie doesn't mistake any minor fans for Pennywise on their way out. Yo. Fuck you, alright? Oof, maybe next time. They call Stanley's home no. and find out that he killed himself, and that just does it. They'd no. all rather it get changed out of and fight an evil clown, so everyone leaves to go back to the inn. Everyone but Bill, that is. No, we're gonna do this. Uh, remember that school role play that we were doing? Yeah, we're going to do that, but I'm a human. Pennywise the clown is waiting for her. She is rightfully afraid of him at first, but Pennywise wins her over in one of my favorite scenes of the movie. People always make fun because of the way I... Well, you can... You, uh, well... To do some yeah, we're going to do it. Yeah, you can be the new kid. To play the role originally made famous by Tim Curry, the producers auditioned 160-something okay. people and chose carefully, knowing that the clown's portrayal would set the tone of the film. Okay. Are you all at your houses? With the most impressive audition, Steve Buscemi and Bill Skarsgård. Skarsgård's depiction of the character took some time to figure out, and it wasn't Is Emily until AFK full phase? Makeup. Oh God, I said full makeup and costume that he was able to land on Pennywise's specific behavior. Pennywise's appearance was kept secret from the kid actors to get a genuine reaction <laughs> in the first scene with him. But after that initial scare, Skarsgård got along real well with them all. Hey guys, are you ready to beat the shit out of me? I can't hear you! <laughs> and he was always careful to make sure his young scene partners were okay. You okay? You okay? Okay. His biggest fan on set may have been Jackson Robert Scott, who played Georgie, and who cried when he was initially kept from seeing Pennywise. Also, just gotta say, I never get tired of watching Bill Skarsgård in full makeup acting like a normal dude. <laughs> that was great. It really is. Pennywise's new friendship with Vicky just can't overpower his hunger for children. So after luring her close enough, he turns into a scary clown and bites her in the face. He kills her below the bleachers with none of the adults over Head, ever knowing a damn thing. And hey, let's pick up another kill for the Count over at the psych ward, where Henry Bowers is now making his escape by killing people like this inmate here. Looks like the guy got his throat slit. Also kind of looks like that joke from Friday Five. Although Henry scares that guard there, we don't see a confirmed kill before we cut to Henry breaking out and getting driven away by zombie Hockstetter. Mike takes Bill to the Dairy Library, where Ben was once cleared at by a creepy librarian, and upstairs to his apartment. This motherfucker lives in the library like some literary Quasimodo. Mike gives Bill some water and shows him an artifact that he apparently stole from the fictional Shakapiwa tribe. Oh, and also, he just drugged Bill. So let's go on a magic carpet ride. 
This Shakopee backstory is an invention of the movies, and honestly, a little bit weird. I think the equivalent scene in the book involves the kids doing hallucinogens in a tent, and I guess they replaced that with this. Oh, and flashing lights warning for a mo, because the story that Mike tells Bill is stroberific and full of crazy blue people fighting a legendary Pokemon. Er, sorry, that's another What? Thing. The vision shows Bill the ritual of Chud, which is not a traditional sermon for cannibal humanoid underground dwellers. Instead, it's a book thing that involves, uh, let's see here. Biting its tongue? That can't be right. Mike and Bill head back to the town's inn and stop the other losers from leaving. With Bill backing Mike now, they agree that it's time to shut up or shut up. And since the ritual of Chud is dependent on memory or something, they have to start back at their absolute favorite place from childhood. The clubhouse. Yeah, the clubhouse. Remember it from the first movie? All that time they spent in the clubhouse? Oh, well, that's okay. They filmed new footage for us. Of course, filming new footage with kids a couple years later meant some of them looked pretty different. So for this and some other flashback scenes, a few of the kids had to be digitally de-aged. I think it was mainly Jeremy Ray Taylor as Ben, Jack Dylan Grazer as Eddie, and definitely Finn Wolfhard as Richie. It's not super noticeable, unless maybe you do some side-by-sides with the first movie. But I guess sometimes their dubbed-over lines sound a little weird. Hey, Richie. You have 10 minutes are up. What are you talking about? The hammock. 10 minutes each was the rule. According to Andy Muschietti, their physical appearance wasn't the only thing that required adjusting either. Your behavior changes from 12 to 15, and I had to remind them that they were not 15 in the fiction. They were 12. They would just, like, come and they naturally do a scene. I would say, okay, now give me the 12-year-old version chased by an animated Paul Bunyan statue, which might be my favorite special effect in the film. Young Richie was able to will the scary monster away, but old Richie can't stop himself from seeing Pennywise atop the lumberjack. And this balloon floating bastard says he knows something private about Richie. Alright guys, I'm gonna stream for a while because this is actually gonna get real stupid and real fast.